in San Francisco. This is the Writer's Block. Hi, my name is Alison Bechtel, and I have just written a memoir about my mother called Are You My Mother? It's kind of hard for me to summarize what this book is about in one sentence. It is a memoir about my mother, but it's also a lot of other things. In a way, it's a book about subjectivity. What really interests me is the self and how we come to think of ourselves as selves. Uh, I guess because I've had a troubled relationship to my own subjectivity for my whole life. In isolation, I'm okay, but as soon as other people come into the picture, as soon as there's relation going on, myself gets very problematic. So I tried to explore this problem by doing a memoir, which ended up being a memoir about my relationship with my mother. Chapter 1, The Ordinary Devoted Mother While engaged in some sort of home improvement project, I inadvertently block my exit from a dank cellar. I start to panic. The only way out is to squeeze through the small, spidery window. I walk along the brook, looking for a place to cross. The stepping stones are underwater. The pool is deep and murky. It's warm out. I'm not wearing anything I need to worry about getting wet. I have some concern about the dirty water, but this only slightly diminishes a sublime feeling of surrender. This story begins when I began to tell another story. I had the dream about the brook right before I told my mother I was writing a memoir about my father. The emotion of the dream stuck with me for days. I had gotten myself out of a dead place and plunged with blind trust into a vital, sensuous one. I'd had some practice in telling my mother difficult things. I felt kind of like I did 20 years earlier when I was preparing to tell her I was a lesbian, and kind of like I did five years before that as I was working up the courage to tell her I'd gotten my first period. That had taken me six months. This story, a memoir about my mother, could just as well begin with either of those scenes. But as I consider moving the beginning further back in time, before the coming out, before the first period, I see that perhaps the real problem with this memoir about my mother is that it has no beginning. Sort of like how I'd understood human reproduction as a child. I was an egg inside my mother, when she was still an egg inside her mother, and so forth and so on, a dizzying, infinite regress. There's a certain relief in knowing that I am a terminus. Even if I'd ever had the slightest urge to reproduce, it's too late now. I'm running out of eggs. My clockwork-like menstrual cycle skipped its first beat the very week in my 45th year that I sat down to begin writing about my mother. Of course, the point at which I began to write the story is not the same as the point at which the story begins. You can't live and write at the same time. I recovered and sped up to get the truck's license plate number. It had been a Stroman's sunbeam bread truck that killed my father, that my father likely jumped in front of. After such a curiously literal and figurative brush with death, telling my mother about the book loomed rather smaller, and a few days later, returning with her from a string of errands, I did it. On the whole, it went as well as I could have hoped. Mom's boyfriend, Bob, came over for dinner that night. Bob is a retired psychiatrist. He had some insight into my brook dream. This is one of my difficulties now, my fear that Mom will find this memoir about her angry. Another difficulty is the fact that the story of my mother and me is unfolding even as I write it. Yet another difficulty is the fact that my mother considers memoir a suspect genre. This adds a confusing observer effect to the whole process. Indeed, my foremost difficulty is the extent to which I have internalized my mother's critical faculties. As of this moment, I've been struggling for four years with the writing of this book. I talk to my mother almost every day. 
That is, I call, she talks, I listen. That's our pattern. I must confess that I have taken to transcribing what she says. I don't think she knows I'm doing it, which makes it a bit unethical. But I want to capture her voice, her precise wording, her deadpan humor. I don't think I could possibly recreate it on my own. I'm trying so hard to get down what she's saying that I'm not really listening properly. I would have more scruples about this, I like to think, if I didn't suspect that she was not so much talking to me as drafting her own daily journal entry out loud. My mother has always kept a journal. She insists this is just a record of things she's done, of external as opposed to internal experience. I share her compulsion for keeping track of life. My mother logs her daily activities in her journal, and every day she reads another journal, the New York Times. Not online. The newsprint, the thing itself. I often think of this passage from Virginia Woolf's diary. What a disgraceful lapse, nothing added to my disquisition, and life allowed to waste like a tap left running, eleven days unrecorded. I started my own diary as a child, and when a spell of obsessive-compulsive disorder made my entries too time-consuming, my mother sat on my bed and took dictation. Getting her undivided attention was a rare treat. It felt miraculous, actually, like persuading a hummingbird to perch on your finger. She was listening to me. Whatever I said, she wrote down. I found this calming, composing. My mother composed me as I now compose her. The running tap of her life flows through my fingers. To subscribe to the Writer's Block and hear more stories, visit kqed.org slash writersblock. The Writer's Block is produced by KQED.